Welcome to New to the Street. I'm your host, Dustin Plannell. Joining us today is Brian Lee, VP as Laser Photonics. Brian, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Well, welcome. You're in New York City right now, uh, but remotely, where are you calling in from? I down in from Hawaii uh, this week. I'm we're the headquarters out of Orlando, Florida, but we're out here for a, a defense tech forum, having discussions with some government agencies on uh, product development and and trying to get some interest generated from some of the research laboratories and some of the great projects we're working on. And what are you hearing from governments and corporations globally, specifically in the area of drones? Well, there's a huge demand signal right now for for anything that has to do with drones. We that from the marketing, the manufacturing of drones, and of course on the reciprocal side of it, the counter drone industry. So there's been executive orders. There's there's specific policies coming down from the Pentagon right now, and there's a massive push to domesticate our our counter drone processes here in the United States. So there's a massive push both financially and uh, there's a really critical need across all government agencies right now. So there's a huge demand signal. Now, what is the great threat that we face when it comes to drones? Well, the, the big threat is, you know, just about anybody can buy a small, cheap drone and use that as a weapon. So you're seeing that in Ukraine, you're seeing that globally. So, so the idea is that they can manufacture cheap drones from overseas, use those as a weapon system, then we're dedicating multi-million dollar systems in order to defeat that. So we have to really flip that on its head on ways to defeat these drones in a much more efficient manner than try to have to spend multi-million dollar weapon systems to destroy, you know, thousand dollar drones. Now, is this an easy way for, let's say, uh, rogue nations or, or certain uh, terrorist organizations to attack uh, the, the free world? Are they using drone technology? Oh, absolutely. They're taking very cheap, cheap ma manufactured, you know, not maybe not Walmart, but a system that can be purchased on the open market and they weaponize it. Either they strap explosives to it or they use it to monitor an area and then use that in order to track on other weapon systems. So it's absolutely been used across the globe as a weapon these days. And are you focused primarily in North America or are you working with customers around the world? Oh, it's a global demand. I mean, I've had some inquiries even this week from some Australia organizations for the, with the big AUKUS push and the partnership between the United States, Great Britain, and Australia. There's a there's a demand across the globe. So there's European need, like I said, Australia, the United States. I mean, it's a global problem. It's not isolated just to the United States. And the laser photonics is was the the business started created specifically to develop, uh, you know anti-drone so to counter this threat you know laser photonics has, has a vast array of products and specialities there's several um, partner companies that we use there's pharmaceutical um laser manufacturing we use industrial cnc machines there's laser ablation processes it's just we have an expertise in laser technology so we saw a critical need for this counter drone capability out there and we really wanted to to, to jump on that with our expertise and develop a system that's radically different than the other counter drone systems out there today. And tell us about some of your team members, because it's clear that you've reached this level of mastery. Uh, I'm excited to hear about some of the other people that you work with internally as well. well we have a, a cutting edge R&D department. Um, we have our PhD level scientists that, that are specialized in and particle physics and other areas like that. Um, laser technology is something we absolutely specialize in. We work in the silicon wafer dicing industry. So specifically on the phone on technology side, which is the government arm, um, we deal specifically with government clients. So we build from client systems that um, the government can use across all those different uh, markets. Now in the government sector, do you see them moving faster on this issue or are they still slow? No, they're removing all obstacles. You know, traditionally procurement on the government side is a very laborious process. It takes months and months, and all indicators right now are saying they're removing all barriers to move as fast as possible in order to operationalize these systems. So I only see it getting faster. So the sooner people can get on board, understand what this, this critical need is, the faster these systems are going to be brought to bear for our uh, military units around the world. 
and talk about your current prototype. Uh, it, I could talk a little bit about our prototype. It, we were able to, uh, uh, you know, effectively engage a drone in air with our system. It destroyed the drone, exactly what we wanted to do. The next phases will be to operationalize that, you know, integrate it with uh, weapon systems across the government. And um, that's the big step, you know, through research laboratories or through um, large government primes. That's the next critical phase of the process. And how does AI fit into this? Well, AI is across the board, so you need to have a system that can descend, descend um, it can tell the difference between an actual target and a non-target. So the AI is going to be integrated in these systems that allows it to intelligently understand what the atmosphere around the systems are, discern which target is real and which is not, and to be able to engage those things in a timely manner. And the cybersecurity approach. I have to imagine that is also a threat, is that these, that these machines that are being built uh, can be compromised. So what sort of uh, without, of course, giving the, the secret sauce, um, how secure are they? Well, these are standalone systems right now, so there's no threat from cyber specifically for this to the, to the level I could talk about it. A lot of the drone systems out there, the way they were being defeated was to actually do exactly what you're talking about. So they're starting to do a lot of isolated systems um, with the drone system. So the idea would be to have a system that's tapped into a robust security cyber platform that would protect it from situations like that. And it's interesting because it sounds like you've been in this space for a while now. Um, what keeps you? Well, I'm a retired Navy officer, and what I did hearing about Army Combat stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, I was saying that you, it sounds like you've been in this industry or in this space uh, for quite a while. Um, is there anything that keeps you up at night still? Well, the drone, the drone threat's just growing faster and faster every day. You know, it, you know, five years ago, you wouldn't have thought this would be something people are talking about. You know, the, the, the hyper speed weapons that are to be in developing, you know, that always people worry about that. You know, I'm a retired Navy officer, so I kind of keep track of as many of the international relations and, and news reporting that I can. But, you know, the drone thing is pretty scary because it used to be, you know, weapons were designed just specifically for governments, but, you know, anybody can use these systems, you know, terrorist organizations, cartels, things of that nature. So the, the threats across the spectrum. So that's the real scary part about it. And is there any sort of global body that sets the rules regarding drones and the use of drone technology, uh, let's say from an ethics standpoint? I'm not familiar myself. If there's a global body that specifically deals with drones, there potentially could be, or if there's not, I'm sure they're having those discussions now due to the, 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 the ever-growing threat that that's presenting, but I'm not aware of any global or um, the internet, the current thing inside the United States that regulates that. Partnerships-wise, who are you guys looking for? Who would be the ideal partner uh, for laser photonics? I think it's twofold. Ideally, you would want a research laboratory, be it through an academic organization or through a government research laboratory to, you know, to partner with our R&D section to, to, to co-develop some of the, the intricacies of the system. And obviously you would need money to a capital investment in order to, to, to expedite, expedite the development process. So I think those are the two critical areas that we would look for partnership. And up to this point, has it been the team investing? Do you guys have a group of investors externally? It's been internal, you know, folks that we know in it kind of an inside um, engagement, but we are looking for outside investors to come in, take a look at our technology and see the value that it's going to bring to the market. And, uh, you know, I'm always curious to know what, what someone's learning right now. Is there anything that's been even surprising you, right? The more that you are working with your R&D team and your, your scientists and your, and your techs, um, and being somebody who's come from the military, was there anything that's still surprising you that the more you're learning about it? I think the most surprising thing in this particular field for me is how fast the government's responded. You know, typically a threat develops out there and it takes a pretty long time for the government to get on board with understanding the threat, bringing systems to bear to defeat that. 
And it's just been pretty shocking how fast the government's gone on board, understood this as a real world threat and removed the barriers for procurement that I was, we were speaking about earlier. Those, that's the really shocking thing for me because that's just not a traditional model across the government when it comes to procuring weapon systems. Do you think this will be the new norm? I hope so, Spe specifically on this particular threat, because I'd, I'd hate to see us revert back to old ways where a threat presents itself and then, you know, we're two or three years behind the procurement cycle on how to f find systems developed or develop systems to defeat those type of uh, threats. So I hope that's not the, th I hope this is a new norm going forward for sure. And how do we learn more about you? Is there a newsletter we can follow? Uh, some social pages. Sure. You can go to laserphotonics.com is um, uh, that website. And then fullnontechnologies.us are, are two sites you can go to check it out. Or you can reach out to do the contact pages on those. And we can um, have further discussions on the technology and ways that people can get on board moving forward. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Brian, for joining us on New to the Street. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You as well. All right, Brian, is there anything that I didn't cover that you want to, uh, we, we have, a, a, you know, another minute or two that we can squeeze in and then they will bring it back around. Anything else you'd like me to add? No, I think that's good. I wish I had a few less ums in there, but, um, <laughs> um, well, I, but I, well, I think gonna, I imagine but... if I sat in your world for five minutes, I would not keep up with you. I'm like, Hey, Brian, fill your buddy Dustin in. Like, what did they say? What, what were those words? They went a bit over my head. Maybe one day you'll come in here, man, and we'll do it in person. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be great. That'd be exciting. Cool. All right. Well, I'm looking at the producer, Jeremy. Uh, I'm sure this is something that uh, we can work on. Well, Brian, look, you, you've been a, a true gentleman. Thank you so much for your service. Uh, congratulations to you and your entire team at Laser Photonics uh, for uh, succeeding. Now, it's Ideas are easy. Execution, well, that's the hard part. So my whole time I did for you, uh, you did a great job today. All right, thanks, Dutch. Appreciate you.